<clears throat> I am not funny. Not that I've really gone out of my way to do so, but the point still stands. I am not naturally the funny one in any group that I've been a part of, and even if I don't plan to stay like that, I would still like to learn how to be funnier and adjust to a dumb situation better. After completely finishing up my dance project and wanting to move on to new things, a couple members of the VRDA pointed me towards the direction of their improv community, and that's when I realized I could finally get some legitimate practice. So with the help of the Skits and Bits community, I was able to get their help in making this endeavor a possibility. For four months straight, I spent nearly every weekend boosting my improv skills. The idea of recording all their sessions was just completely off limits, and that's totally fair for a no judgment zone. But, like with the dance project, I was given an exception to show what an average workshop looks like for users. So we start in the workshop, where we have a rough breakdown of the theme of the session, and getting into all our groups for the day. Hi! Hello everyone! Hello, hello! Yeah. And this week, physicality is one I'm particularly excited for. One, because I'm running it, and that means I get to call all the shots, because I am power hungry. Uh, and two, because physicality is just a really interesting topic in general. There's so much that can go into it, especially when you're trying to combine it with a bunch of other skills. Um, Resh is very interested in documenting our group and was very interested in being able to uh, uh, record one of our proceedings here and create a video out of it. Uh, we are very happy to have him here. Uh, however, we do understand that recording can be a little bit uh, awkward for people, especially when they're trying to learn. Okay, I have a lot more than I thought, actually. Okay, so, with all that said, everyone, go to your rooms! Alright, I've never actually been to room 4. I don't know where it is. With room 4 not being too far away, we got ready for the first of the three games I'm showing off for the day. To start off with, uh, of course, we're going to be doing Moving Name here. Moving Name is all about mimicking a person and listening to their preferred nickname and pronouns. It's just meant to get to know the person, their body language, and replicating their tone and everything else. Nice to meet you. Name's Zidane. What are your pronouns? What are your pronouns? He, him. Sorry, I forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Nice I'm Zidane. You. And I'll go nice by him. Name's, Name's Zidane. Zidane. I'm him. Hey, oh, I am Rush. I go by he, him. Hey, oh, I'm hey, Rush. I go by he, him. Go by he, him. He, him. Man, is that what I sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Squid. She, her. Hi, Hi, I'm Squid. Hi, I'm Squid. Hi, I'm Squid. Yeah. Alright, you get the gist of things. Let's go on to the meat of the improv. Our second game is called Freeze Tag, where two people on stage create a scene, and at any time, you yell freeze, and you tag out someone, and you take their place, and from there, you create a brand new scene. You have a really nice back, I'll have you know. Like, <laughs> top tier. Oh my god. No, turn around, turn around, turn around. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm actually entering a uh, steel curtain competition next week with uh, the shoulder one. You know, we just grab the steel Please. ball, it's hollow, and you just. I'm sorry, officer. I haven't done anything. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh. I know that you are uh, smoking a cigarette. Oh, I know cigarettes are highly illegal in in cigar town. Give me your hand. Give me the hand, son of boy. That phrase. No, that's not how you play patty cake. You don't... It's hand, 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 hand. <laughs> not hand, hand. Patty cake, patty cake, bakers, something. Oh, uh, we're such good writers. We should start writers. Writers. <laughs> we, we should, we should. Freeze. And then... Yeah. Ooh. That's fine, we'll just eat over here. Not going on weirdos, okay? Freeze. Um, excuse me, can I get my order? Uh, what was your order again? I'm sorry, I'm horribly incompetent. Sorry, uh, sorry. I ordered, I ordered what? I ordered three Big Macs, a uh, 30-piece nugget, a uh, large fry. Right. And actually, you know what? Yes. You're, you're starting to annoy me. Can I get, can I get some, uh, can I get some free fries with that? I, I've forgotten your whole order. Can you start again? Oh. Something, there's a burger in there. It's got five fries, a milkshake. I, I'll huh? take, hey, I'll take a milkshake. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna throw that on top. Milkshake, got it. Yeah, free food. And your milkshake thrown on top. Ah, uh, good. Ah. Freeze. Yo, bro, are you okay? Yeah, I took a pretty mean dive, man. Ah, uh, good. I don't know if I'm gonna make yeah, it. I see that, man. Uh. Hold on, hold on. I got you. I got you. Come on, come on. Thank you. You know, man, when you when you're serving like when you're serving like that on the beach, you need to get some precautions and all you. Uh. Uh, are you? 
Are you like okay? I think it's I think it's fine. Uh, uh, I can I can just I can wrap it up. I can wrap it up. Ready to go do more mean, mean skateboarding? After being given our feedback on what our team leaders liked and what they wanted to see more from our performances, we got working on the third and final game that I wanted to show off. Time travel is a game all about being able to create a story on the spot and make a past, present, and future for where things should go. At random intervals, or when it seems most convenient to, one of the team leaders will call out a time range to go back towards, and we must act out what could have happened during such. I think you forgot to make that one quest battle. Oh no. Yeah, there's no imposter for it, honey. Uh, let no. me just, uh... Alright. You need to clean the closet. It's not... It's not you need to clean a closet. It is you need to clean the closet. Take it away. Mom came up to me earlier and she was she offered to give us ten dollars if we went and cleaned the closet. The one you know the, the, the one that's downstairs in the basement. We the if we clean that out. Closet. I don't really want to do that to be honest. I, last time I tried to go in there, I swear I saw something spooky. Just, Pause. But, Two days ago when you tried to get in the closet last. Wait, right, I'll be right here. I'll hold you. I'll hold you in case if anything pulls you. Okay. I got you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, is that a spider? I, I don't know. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm good. It's close oh, to Back to the present. Okay. It's, so it's, it's, it's $10, though. We can get a new game on the Switch. I don't know. Is 10 bucks worth our lives? I mean, is, there's there's only an angry monkey in there. Maybe a few spiders and somehow a fucking flipping zebra. I don't know how it got in there. Seems pretty easy. It's, it's not gonna eat us. I don't... I don't know. I'm... I miss our little brother. Maybe if we if we think strong enough, the zebra will spit him back out. All right, let's open this. Pause. Four years ago, when the zebra ate your brother. All right. Are you okay? Where are you? Benny, Benny, where are you? We gotta. Let's hand me that lock. We can't. You better get your butt in there. No, I'm not doing you that. You better get your butt I'm not... in there. Mom's gonna kill us. I, and I'm, not I, I'm not taking the fall for this. I, I'm not either. That's your fault. You bought the zebra. He, it's your fault. He, he, we'll say he got outside. <laughs> you got, he, he's not a dog. <laughs> Are you down or what? Because I, I need that 10 bucks, man. You're holding my hand for this, though. I'm not doing this alone. Uh. Oh, obviously, I'll get a rope so then I'll tie you as if you're like a dog on a leash. How you called, you know, Benny when he got stuck in the, the closet. You know, you remember that? Remember that? When you just said he went outside like a dog. I'm gonna treat you like one so we can find him. Pause <laughs> 10 minutes later. Ah! Ah! Help! I got you now. I got you now. Okay, 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 okay. Ew, why are you wearing mom's panties again? Really? And they're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's comfy and easy to wear. <laughs> I assume like the zebra like bit him and like tore the pants off. And he's just like, no! <laughs> Absolutely fantastic work, both of you, on that scene. Great physicality. I loved your explorations of, of the, the closet. And that was just one session of several months of work. And with all these different types of games that we practiced and went with our leaders, there's really so, so much that I wish I could have covered, but it just couldn't for time's sakes. If you want to check out more improv communities, improv VR, Jackaliers, and improv night are all good places to check out. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to stick with skits and bits and just see what's incoming. After getting some extra practice with Hans and Sage, attending as many of the workshops as I could, and just watching several videos on improv, I felt that it was ready to work on the third stage of learning improv, which was performing. I managed to get into their March show, which I was super nervous about because this is the first time I ever performed anything in VR, but with the help that I had, I think that I'm in a good spot. We did some practice with the games and woke up our vocal cords. Oh, wow. Wow. Then, yeah, we just waited for the show to begin. Oh, so, okay, so we're just doing what I was talking about. Okay, I'm seeing people come over, but... I think in the workshop they've said like a few times, uh, avoid bringing guns into improv as much as you can. So I'm good to go. I'm just turning on the actor chairs from back here. 
Okay. All right. The pressure was on. The stream was starting, and then. Have some great improvisers who can't wait to perform for you. And here they all are. Let's come get out here, improvisers. They're gonna introduce themselves to you. Hey, hey, woo! All right, let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. With the roster introduced and the stage full of the participants for the day, it was time to show off the games of the day. It was time for the first game of the show. World's worst. You basically act slash voice out the worst type of person you'd have to deal with on a certain job. I'd show you how it went for me, but I crashed for most of it. So let's see what the others came up with. Deja vu, I've been in this place before. <laughs> Kid, can you take over? I'm a little drunk. Ten and two. Ten two. Hey, I just uh, got diagnosed with narcolepsy. Listen, I only took this job so I get on FarmersOnly.com. Well, these rocks ain't gonna grow themselves. All right, Piglet. Look to the sky. Look to the sky. <laughs> oh my God, Stardew Valley made this look so much easier. Mind if I open a window? Okay, look. I don't know what the issue is. If you don't have any air on the moon, just plant some trees. It'll just make itself. We're still gonna fake the landing. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. Worst, everybody, let's give them a round of applause! Alright, hopefully it'll actually let me be part of this next game. Shared Holiday is all about using small prompts to gaslight a group of people into thinking a holiday exists. Well, I guess. You need to describe how it is celebrated and admired by the townspeople. How you may do that? Completely up to you. So, after the audience was asked to come up with some prompts, we were left with... We have mac and cheese, goldfish, and hopscotch. So let's hear about this, this uh, great holiday that I've, I've, I've heard a little bit about. Okay, so it happens in every leap year, right? Like, this is just a leap year thing. Yeah, you can only have these sorts of things so often before people just genuinely get bored and oversaturated. I mean, it's like, people get bored of Christmas and Halloween, obviously, but no, our holiday? Completely different than everything else. You gotta hopscotch past those four years to get to the true excitement. Hopscotch can be a little bit kitty. What you gotta do if you're an adult, get the hops and the scotch while you play hopscotch. That's the best part of it. We throw them a couple goldfish if they need some refreshments along the way because honestly, like, everyone needs a snack. Everyone needs a little bit of refreshments. And we're broke, so we're giving you goldfish. So screw you. <laughs> Can you talk about the origins of this uh, this holiday? Shit, right. Yeah, of course. Uh, back 4,000 years ago, we had a very massive amount of artificial cheese, and we needed some sort of way to get rid of all of it. And unfortunately, uh, America had not been discovered yet, so we can't just throw them that. So we needed to make some way to make this artificial cheese seem edible. And so, the invention of mac and cheese and goldfish were born. People needed to find a way to, like, you know, flushes out the system. A lot of cheese, you know, like way too much cheese. So games were invented, all sorts of games, one of them being hopscotch. And as we, you know, we give all the adults their refreshments and the kids their refreshments, they're obviously just gonna, they're gonna keep going. They're, they're gonna be wasting all of this energy on cheese of all things. We're, we're, we're geniuses for making these hot types of holidays. And then also too, after they finish the hot scotch, they get hungry again. And what are they gonna eat? Mac and cheese. It's an endless cycle. The point is to sell cheese. They store these things in the mines. So like, the more that we can get rid of it, the more free space we have to give away. Wait, are you saying this is another one of those corporate holidays where they're just trying to make money off of us? Is that what's- is that what holiday isn't is? about that. I also think about it this way. What better way to show, yeah, you care about your family than buying them a bunch of cheese, right? Okay. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Like, I can- I can give you a special deal for this, 20% off. Okay. Oh I love a good sale. <laughs> and I love cheese. So I love this holiday. Good job! Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah! Let's give them a round of applause for hot scotch cheese goldfish holiday! What's up? On to the next game, which was late to work. An employee is late to work, but they don't know why. 
but luckily they have some help from some mute actors. The boss knows why they were late and has to help them realize for themselves without directly telling them. The employee combines the actor's scenes with the boss's words to hopefully figure out why they were late, and that's the game. Let's do, let's do this, because uh, I heard Monsters in the Bed, and I think that's fun. Monsters uh, under so the let's bed, do Monsters under the Bed, and then their house monsters blew down. The ah, okay. <laughs> You're late. Again. Uh, again. again, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know again. Um, um, this is the third time this week, you want to start explaining yourself? I was really, really cozy in bed. So getting up out of bed was a little bit harder than usual. Uh, I also, also, also my, my normal mode of transportation like died out. I, I kind of got on a sled and mushed my way here. Um, I'm gonna make this company die out if you keep coming late like this. I think, oh, you know what? Do you see something weird? I think, I think I was stuck on my bed because I saw something weird. Yeah, I think I saw, I think, I think my, I think my pets or the rat, Rat people came. Um, they. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Probably one of those two. So I know why you were bedlocked. What else? What What else is going on here? I think I spat fire at whatever was coming my way to uh, try and deal with that. Jesus. And that kind of took a while. You're wasting this company money by telling me these ridiculous ass stories. Come on, man. What happened? I mean, make something, something, work on a dollar, hours, time, company time, whatever. Um, think this life is a fairy I, I tale or something? Uh, hmm? Is that what you think this is? A fairy tale? Um, you, it's super funny that you mentioned that. I think I just kind of got pushed away. I, 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 how, yeah, how high, if I was high last night, would that be an issue? That's its own separate issue that we're not gonna go into. What the fuck? Okay, I thought you were chill like that, but okay, sorry, my bad. Um, I think I fell. I think I fell down. I was blown down. I was, I, I, I was being fanned off. Uh, just, just so much. I, I, I was in a house. Oh, you know what? Hmm. So there is this wolf. There yeah, this wolf. I know. There's one up there. Um, yeah, yeah, my. Oh, that motherfucker! You blew my house down! Hey! <laughs> oh. God. You had monsters under your bed, and then your house got blown down! Everybody get okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. You wasted, like, $200,000 of the company's money with that story. The final game being showed off is called Scriptwriter. One person writes a story for the others to follow, the actors can help influence where the story goes, but the scriptwriter makes the final call. That's all I'm gonna say, and since we're, we're just gonna get into this last part, I absolutely love this, so let's, let's just see what happened. On a dairy farm in 1999, there was a boy who loved to play with his dog. So much so that he would pretend to be a dog day and night, which would be at the consternation of his father, who hated uh, his uh, son emulating the family pet. And his mother just was beside herself in grief, knowing that her son was now going down the path of her, her long lost father, who ran off into the woods to live with the wolves. One night, uh, the mother and father uh, huddled in the corner in the living room. Hey, we need to get rid of the dog. And the father's like, I know. I, I But I've been trying to figure out what to do, because he just... L Loves the the dog so much. I mean, I've been holding this rifle for like nine days, just trying to get up the courage to just get rid of it. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing with <laughs> what are you doing with your favorite telescope, uh, son? <laughs> you want you take a look down it. He he said to. Mother, his mother was just like, no, Kristoff, uh, you can't do that. Just stop, stop, stop. Let me think about this. Just, uh, uh, we got to think of another way, that, something for Tim to love, something new, something something more uh, uh, appropriate than his dog. So she pulled out the phone and called uh, this 1-800 uh, number she saw at 2 o'clock in the morning. There was advertising uh, a companion called 
The Love 2.0. Could you maybe hook me up with one of your units? Uh, sure thing. That'll be six hundred ninety-nine a week. <laughs> look, look, look! At Later that night, the, the mother and the father uh, grabbed the dog after giving it a box full of Benadryl and, and carried it into the night and left it uh, uh, deep in the woods to fend for itself, uh, knowing, hoping that by morning the Love 2.0 will be there and Timmy won't care about uh, Sparksif any longer. The next morning, there was a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Ta-da! Look at- look! I have your Love 2.0 right here! Uh... It's an anthropomorphic dog! <laughs> Honey, uh, please back off. Let me... I thought this was gonna be a machine. Uh... It is. It's just <laughs> the greatest AI software man has to offer, plus the greatest costume work from Jin Henson Studios. <laughs> Give me the first first week's rent. Thanks. Uh, Ta-ta for now. Boy, <laughs> said <laughs> Love 2.0. Hey guys, you wanna love me? Cause I love you. We're all one big happy family. So with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you, won't you say you love me too? While his father was asking for, for love 2.0 to please get off their knees, uh, the uh, Timmy was trying to think of a way to get rid of this intrusion to his life. Man. <laughs> Maybe if I... <laughs> picked up father's telescope and everybody seems to cower whenever he points it maybe it'll work for me <laughs> no timmy said his father oh uh, you please don't give me the gun and timmy's like gun are you why what what no i just i was just why no wonder everybody was scared of it you've been pointing a gun at everybody that comes to the house the mother who has created, had been having a love affair behind the scenes with Love 2.0, uh, uh, jumps in to stop. <laughs> no, no, you can't! I love him! Just like he loves me! And he loves you, and he loves Timmy! Why can't we be together? All of us! Like a throuple! <laughs> we can raise Timmy together! It's okay, Timmy! You'll get used to it! Timmy? You know what? You're the cause of all my pain. Get out. Off to the publisher. First draft, we no just notes. Got off Twitch. <laughs> I'm burning that thing. <laughs> and that's the show. Well, almost. Before I make my final remarks and mention what I've learned, let's hear how some of the other people's experiences going through the community has gone. Let's start with some of the newer people. So, the question I have for you is, uh, what got you into virtual improv? It's not really an interesting answer, but I saw an ad for it in, like, the VR chat New Year's world. Uh, my first improv thing was the crossover event between VRC Trans Academy Group and Skits and Bits. I had bought a lovely car. Unfortunately, with cars, you have to change their oil, which I forgot to do, so it explained. Exploded. I can't really get out to the improv place I usually go to. Oh, this seems like it'd be really fun. And then I put it off for like a month. <laughs> and then I remembered about it. I'm like, because I've been thinking about it for like weeks and weeks. I'm like, yeah, I know. I mean, wanted to find more things to do when people hang out. And I thought I'd try going through uh, Trans Academy events 
I wanted an excuse to use VR chat more. I had a VR headset that somebody gave me a while ago that I never really used because why would I go in VR? Nifty was my team lead during the time. They did a great job of explaining basics and like just being excited about it and it was infectious. And I looked it up, there was like VR and improv, so I was like, I'll give that a try. Uh, I met Pure at that time. He encouraged me to come back, so I joined. I am very glad that I did. I found a lot of cool friends, I found, I found my partner, like shit, shit's cool. And then it spiraled into this. It went great, and I kept coming back and back, and I think I've somewhat established myself here now. I'm also super funny now. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Seems like you're having uh, fun if you keep coming back. Well, that's two questions, so you just broke the rule. Uh, everybody get that's, him. That's not a question. Uh... That's not a question. They've been here for as long as I have, but this community is years old. What about the people who have been here since the beginning? How have you specifically benefited from performing improv in VR? Oh my gosh, that's a loaded question and a half. I'm digging right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, you're fine. Take as much time as you need. I guess one of the like main enjoyments that I've gotten doing this has been like an outlet for me to kind of be expressive despite my really bad anxiety. Back in the day, I used to be a horrific introvert. Something I'd often tell, you know, people who are nervous up there, it's like, hey, you're not you on the stage, you could just be whatever you want to be. One benefit is definitely being more present. And being present can just not help in improv, but in like your day to day, just in every day, maybe even your job. I rang in a customer and she comes up to me and is like, oh, high five. And I freeze. She's got her hand up like this. And for me, that, that helps like alleviate nerves like that. I still get like nervous for performances, especially if I'm the one hosting it. Being the nervous wreck I am, I go like this. You just want to be present, so you understand what's going on, and you can have a conversation with them. With ADHD, it, for me, it really helps me as well. The, and I just really like taking that, being present. Finished up a Raindurance performances, and I was like a main character, but all my lines were improvised. So it was just like, I just need to be this mystic person and just reply how she would reply. And now, you know, I stand on a stage in front of, you know, 30 people, all because I learned improv. The end of the show happened and something weird happened with this adventure that was not expected in the slightest. Receiving a bunch of genuine compliments from so many people after the show. Rest, 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 rest. Hi, I'm proud of you. Hi, thank you. Even friends who don't usually play VR chat or are barely interested in what I make in the first place still coming in to support me even through this. What's up? That was amazing. Hey, good job. Hey, hey thank you. Congrats on being on the show, Rash. Good to see you. Good to see you there. Hey, you. You! Good job, first of all. Good job. Thank you. Good job. But how dare you call me out on stage? How dare! <laughs> Improv isn't about coming up with the best jokes or being the center of attention. It's about how you adjust to a situation. How you talk, how you act, how you are in a scene. And I never really thought I'd say that for myself. Nithia and Wall, thank you for helping me find this community in the first place. Hans and Sage, thank you so much for helping us with the extra practice for the big show. Switzer, Zircon, and Wall again. Thanks for help creating such an amazing community. I can't wait to see what the future looks like. I wish I could thank everyone individually here, but this video can't be even longer than it already is. But if I didn't mention your name, just know this thanks goes to you. This has seriously been my favorite project yet, and I couldn't do it without you. I want to keep doing more stuff like this, but obviously something that takes four months means that I can't do it all the time, so keep an eye out for what there is in the future. But that's all I really have to say for now. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the stuff that people tell you to do, and I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Also, everybody, come up on stage. Let's take a picture. Let's. Twelve two point oh. Please kill me. Nope, too late. You're stuck there.